Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will cover the UML diagram pertaining to abstraction and generalization. But before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad. <coughs> وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم آمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد We begin in the name of Allah the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter and we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his fellow companions. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him and his family. Amen. For this portion of abstraction, we will cover abstract classes only. Interfaces will be in the upcoming lecture, insha'Allah, bi'idhnillah and God willing. However, we will cover generalization because it is related to uh, abstract classes. Though we have not covered this term, mainly because I forgot to mention it, but <laughs> generalization is another term for inheritance. So what we have covered pertaining to inheritance can be applied to the term generalization generalization refers to inheritance and since abstract classes function through inheritance you can say that they function through generalization as well and i should draw an arrow here just to highlight the fact that we will be discussing abstract classes for this class or this uh, lecture Interfaces will be in the upcoming lecture, bi'idhnillah. Okay. So, firstly, we will cover how to draw a, a UML diagram for abstract classes. If you recall, we normally have three compartments, three to four, depending on how you wish to divide them. But for simplicity, we will say three. The first compartment is for the name. The second compartment is for the instance variables. And the third compartment is for methods. The reason I mentioned for is that there are certain schools that teach the method compartment should be further divided into subdivisions or two sub compartments like so. One is for the getters and setters only, the other is for everything else. But if you are not using a getter or a setter for whatever reason, it will be one compartment. You can also, I have seen people you place getters and setters in the same compartment as other methods. It truly does not matter because when you place the brackets for the parameter list after a method name, people would understand that this is a method whether you have it in two sub compartments or one main compartment it does not matter so for this example let us say we will uh, create an a student class as we have done before so here we will place the uh, i will just use the public access specifier for simplicity and we will say courses of data type int and name of data type string. And here, let us use one method. I'll probably have to reduce the font size. Uh, <clears throat> display uh, display info, and it returns nothing, so it returns void. This is 
this is the same as a simple class. Here is how an abstract class differs from a simple class diagrammatically. Uh, maybe I can use the... Oh, yeah, okay. Now, when you wish to draw an abstract class, you cannot leave the name as such. You have to either, if you will not... Uh, uh, well, you have to either italicize the name, like so. This indicates that this is an abstract class, or it indicates that this is related to abstraction because interfaces share the same uh, mentality or the same uh, syntax or the same appearance, however you wish to label it. So you either italicize the name or you do not have to italicize it, but you must surround it in angle brackets like so. This indicates abstraction. And that is it. This is how you would draw an abstract class. And of course, since abstract classes can only be inherited or generalized, you would use the arrow, the solid arrow, <coughs> from the subclass, if the, if the subclass was here. And uh, you know what, I will just draw it manually like so. This indicates inheritance or generalization. You know what? Maybe I will just draw it using solid uh, straight lines instead, like that. There, and that is of course this indicates generalization or inheritance. And that is it for this lecture. I hope. This video was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid.